Good afternoon, bee people. It's Jason here from the Bohemia Bees here on the eastern shore of Maryland, and we have another video for you. We're going to show you how to make this uh, swarm trap, which is your standard swarm trap, out of just two pieces of lumber that you can get your local hardware store. Uh, these pieces of lumber are pretty well, or pretty commonly found at your local hardware store. Naturally, you have a piece of one by eight by six pine one by. It doesn't have to be the select grade. It can have some knots in it, as long as it doesn't have any cracks or bows. So your one by six by eight, and then your 15 32nd piece of exterior plywood pine sanded. Uh, this is, as you can see, about a little over a, a quarter inch, 15 32nd really, um, plywood. It's about a half inch, half inch thick. And you're going to use that, and that's a two by four piece. Uh, you can buy a big sheet of plywood and rip them, but I'm going to show you how to build it out of just these two pieces. This is less than $20 in materials, besides maybe your little disc and the nails and the equipment to build it. But we're going to show you how we're going to do that today. Okay, so we're going to take the uh, piece of plywood that we've uh, have here and we're going to set it on our table saw and rip the plywood twice and as a measurement uh, approximately nine and a half, 19 and a half which is the width of the one piece of bottom board and two one buys. Uh, the one buys are not actually one inch they're slightly less than one inch so you'll need to make a couple measurements on your end to make sure that when you have the two sides and the 18 inch piece nested between them whatever the width of that is That'll be the width of your board that you're ripping here. Uh, we need a front and a back, so we're going ahead and, and ripping those to that size. Okay, be sure to not throw away the uh, smaller piece. That scrap is not scrap. We'll use that for other parts of the uh, process. Okay, so now we move over to our radio arm saw for our one by, and we've positioned the one by. We've already got markings here for uh, the cuts. The first cut is going to be at 15 inches, and the next cut will also be at 15 inches. And the last and final cut will be at 18 inches. The remaining part of the board will be used for the rim of our roof and for the stabilizing bar for the tree. Okay, so remember that small piece that we had it looked like scrap in the last time we ripped the two pieces off? We're going to trim that down such so that we have the cap ends or the ends for the frame rests you'll see that will close off. So that's the small piece we have here. Okay, so this small piece that we have, we just cut off the last board that you see over here. We just slice that off. That's where it came from. And now we're going to rip this in half. These are for the end pieces or the end caps for the uh, frame rests. We'll see how that goes together here in just a minute. You want to be very careful on this one because you have a small piece of wood. It needs to be propped up and definitely don't want to have your fingers in the way. So you're going to leave, use your blockers or you know your, your props to help try to prevent it uh, from shifting and holding in place and keep your fingers out of the way. Safety first as always. We're back over to our table saw and the uh, two front pieces that we sliced earlier to approximately 19 and a half or a little bit more uh, again depending on the width of your two boards we're now ripping down these pieces even further to approximately 16 inches 
This is gonna be so that they cover the front and just go slightly above the 15 inch pieces that we just cut. So again, approximately 16 inches, you're gonna rip these boards down uh, as their final cuts and hang on to the scraps from these as well because we'll utilize them for one of the sides of the roof or one piece for the roof and for uh, other parts. Okay, we're back over to our table saw and the pieces that we have for the roof we're going to have to trim down and you'll want about an inch gap is what I was basically showing and you're going to rip that final piece of board in two strips actually a third strip uh, which will leave a small piece remaining but you'll want to rip this and you want to be careful when you rip something like this because it tends to kick back in some cases same thickness as what we're using here. We're going to rip the board, as you can see, in our two pieces for our side rails. We're doing a demonstration here as to what it would have to be cut over. Those are the side rails that you can use. We make a third cut, actually, that will allow you to make side pieces. Okay, now that we've got all our pieces cut, we're going to go ahead and assemble. And we're going to be putting together the main part of the box with these pieces and our lid with these pieces. So I'm going to use a combination of a tight bond wood glue, tight bond three, as well as some nails and a Mac nailer. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have your box squared up using the uh, one and a half inch 15 gauge nails in my pneumatic nail, my Metabo. Uh, you can use whatever you want. You can hammer with the hammer. This makes it easier. Your first piece that you're going to be putting on is the bottom of the box. And that's the full length of 18 inches from end to end. That's your cut on your first piece uh, of the, the, the one by. Um, then you're going to have your two sides, which are 15 inches, and they're going to come up the side. You're going to put those on the outside of your box to give it the right height and the right width for a frame to go in. I typically like to take, look for the, where the bow is in the wood. So if I need to staple it in so it doesn't curve out, and I'll look for where that is at. I'm going to put my tight bond glue along the edge that I'm going to be nailing. Take my board, line it up, and I'm going to put a nail in that. That'll hold it just enough to square it off the bottom and put a nail in the corner as well. Okay, we're gonna do the same with this side. you have your box you're going to inspect it to make sure it fits a frame which when squared up it will okay and then we're going to put two more nails on each side to strengthen it okay. once you have your box in place you're going to take your hoverboard the one side you're going to square it up on the ends of the box. It's going to have a, an overhang up here, and you're going to adjust the tops in just a second. But just make sure you square the bottom corners. Get the bottom corner square, turn it around, and 
then tighten up your front with the board. I then go back and put the different one on the sides. That just makes sure it lasts longer. other side, square up the bottom corners, check the top, finish it off. box as you can see it fits a deep frame just like you see here now in the very beginning you might wonder why we cut them shorter for this lip here well this is so you don't have to notch out a lip to put the um, the actual frames in on if the frame rest is part of the side that's where these come in we're gonna take these and close off the ends box. You can see it's a pretty solid box. Frames will go in it just like that. Now we'll talk about setting these up and prepping them when we get to that phase in the process. Let's continue the build. We're going to work on the lid now. Set that aside. Let's get our lid pieces. Okay, so We've got the pieces for the lid, and if you remember, um, there's a couple different ways you could do this. If you had a bigger piece left over, you could actually um, put it so that the inside rails will fit over the edge. And that's, you know, you'll get a little bit more of a lip if you wanted to. Um, you could also rip these to be a little bit longer if you want to out of that wood. Um, what I would recommend is, you know, make the judgment call there. We did them, you know, approximately, you know, an inch wide, a little over an inch and a half, an inch, an inch and a quarter wide. And you really just need something to sit on the roof with a little bit of a catch. So this is your roof. And this is the board that was left over. Remember that board? It sits right on there, but you got to keep that roof on. So we're going to take and just build the little cleats that basically keep it on. I like to put a little wood glue. So it puts a little bit of stress on it. Now I don't have my vise over here, so that would have been helpful if I had my vise to be able to hold it. But you really just need to center these up on the edge, put a nail in. The other side. In the middle for now and because it's such a distance I'm going to go ahead and put two more okay now we're going to flip it over do the same thing on the side
Now we've got our two sides. Let's just finish it off with our end caps. One thing they build when you're building swarm traps, they don't need to be perfect. So if your cuts aren't perfect, it's not that big of a deal. Just make sure it's, it's enough that it contains the cavity. And there's our lid. And that fits on there tight. All right, so the next thing we're gonna build is we're gonna build a, a piece to actually attach to the back to allow it to hang from the tree from the scraps. So for our handle that hangs from the tree, we took the pieces that were left over from cutting off the ends of these. We sliced them into small little blocks because the, the double thickness of this is just wide enough past this other piece. This is the middle core piece from the strips that were cut off the ends. We're gonna take these and we're gonna glue them together You can use screws to do this, or if you're just trying to do it quickly, nail in the first layer. Just to hold it in place. That's what the next layer needs to be, which is inches. All right. So now with that being in place, we can go ahead and take the next layer and glue it on as well. All right. So now we have our brace for the tree. That will go on. You could drill a hole there to hang it on a nail. The first when you prep it, we'll do that and we'll drill a hole in the front. The point of this bracket in the back is so that it clears the lid as it comes off. And then it's far enough away from the tree that you can put a strap through. Put a strap around the tree, strap around the box. Let's go ahead and finish this off and then we'll be uh, good with the build. Okay, so the last thing to do we need to do is to put in a hole for the bees to actually get inside. And if you remember, we have uh, a thick piece of board that's on the bottom of this, so you can't put it in the directly in the bottom. So I'm using these little uh, closed wheels, the bee closed wheels. I use them for nukes and such. And I'm gonna make sure I find the center where I want it to be and make sure I'm just up high enough above where that actual bottom would be. And I'm gonna drill with a three quarter inch hole drill, a hole, That'll give the bees enough to go in using the disc. And if I want to close it off, I can. Okay. 
I'm going to make sure I also drill in the top of my tree hanging post. As well. So now I have something to hang it on the tree before I, uh, when it's attached to the box. I can hang it on the tree so it can level itself before I strap it on. Last thing to do, put on our disc. You can get these discs online, Amazon, many beekeeping stores have them. It's just a good way to be able to um, make sure it's just snug enough to be able to turn the disc and keep it in place so it doesn't spin. So it should not be able to spin lightly, but be able to turn with your hand to close it. Because when the bees actually go inside your swarm trap, you want to be able to close it to be able to transport it back to where your, your apiary is. Okay. Let's attach our back on. that from the inside. With a screw. And then we're done. Okay, and there you have your finished product. Uh, we have our dial here in the front that can be open and closed and allows the bees to get in and out. So when you want to remove it, we have the post attached to the back to be able to hang it and put a strap through it. Okay, and we have our lid that comes on and off that keeps the uh, the rain out. And if you look inside the swarm trap, you'll see there's your uh, frame rests on both sides and your standard frame will fit, deep frame will put in there. So a couple things about swarm traps and we have another video that we just posted about setting up your swarm trap. You always wanna feel like the bees or give the bees the impression that it's a larger cavity. You know, naturally old drone comb is attractive to bees and they, they really come in looking for cavities that have old drone comb from either old hives or whatever the case in a cavity of a tree or in a house uh, or opening. So this uh, setting up your swarm trap has is, is got to have at least a couple frames, maybe two or three max, but allowing that space to go below, uh, the airspace below and in front. So when the scout bee comes in, he sees a lot of open cavity to be able to, to move that, that actual swarm to. That's the key with setting up a swarm trap. Naturally, on our other video, we'll talk about how to bait a swarm trap using various lemongrass oil and other off the market on, on you know market stuff on the market that's sold. But that's basically how we built these swarm traps. Uh, we do sell these, so look out uh, on our store for them to be online. And uh, if you don't want to take the time to build them on your own, uh, we can definitely uh, make one for you. We're pretty much um, back order for this year so we won't have any available for this year but if you're looking to get some done for next year we can definitely put some together for you appreciate everyone watching definitely put your comments below let us know for uh techniques and things that you've done to help with your swarm traps swarm uh, swarm trapping success uh if you're a beekeeper and uh get those get those free bees with the swarms and uh naturally get your own swarm boxes set up uh, make sure you get permission to put them up on any uh land that's private or even public so you're not putting them up in uh, areas where uh, people don't want them to be. But you know, swarm traps are definitely a, a unique way of capturing freebies and bring them to your apiary and growing in your apiary with good feral genetics uh, from the local colonies. Uh, so appreciate everyone watching. And if you have any questions or comments below, please put below in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel, like uh, us on Facebook, follow us, and share with your friends. As we continue to learn about the bees and build cool stuff with the bee for the bees, here at the Bohemia Apiary, where beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby, it's an obsession.